Yeah. Yeah. Get Go ready. Ahead. Just on Macu. Um, yeah. So Macu, Macu has had some scans. Um, bank holiday yesterday, so the consultants reading the scans um, today. Uh, we hope to have news for you um, a little bit later in the week. Okay. Okay. For that, Owen's oh, fine. Fine to play on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. What's your stuff got on Macos? Well, we'll, give you some new, we'll give you some news later in the week. Okay. Reasonable chance of? We'll give you some news later in the week. Okay. Is it is a, new, a new issue of Macos? Yeah, correct. <coughs> You know, I, 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 I'm in danger of repeating myself. He's had a scan. It hasn't been read yet. It's going to be read later, and we'll let you know when we know. Okay. In terms of lifting the players, Jeremy, after we think you had to do anything about that, or has that been fairly, fairly natural? Not really, because um, you know we, we we talked yesterday, and everybody reacts to these things in their own individual way, um, and that's just natural. Um, and the objective is the week is to is to make sure that by Saturday, you know, we have a, a powerful collective response. Our, our group is very good at moving on. They're very good at leaving the past in the past, responding to setbacks. And if you've been involved in the training session today, it was a pretty buoyant um, group that I saw anyway. We've had a magnificent season, a really good season. We had a, a disappointment on Saturday, albeit that I was, you know, extremely proud of uh, of a lot of the performance and we came up against a really good team on the day so we're, we're in good spirits coming into, into this weekend. And it's been a magnificent season as you say but two losing finals would obviously put a very different ending on the season than when you managed to win. Well it would, it would in a lot of people's eyes and probably um, it's not what we want so I'm not going to lie to you of course it's not what we want but these things are only ever um, a, a big problem um, if you don't learn from them. Um, I think that our group down the years have been good at learning from these situations. Um, if we win on Saturday, you know, you'll all say it was a brilliant season. If we lose, you'll say it wasn't. But if I know what's happening on the inside of the organisation. I know that we're in a, a very strong position um, for lots of reasons. Sometimes um, for people who are outside of that, you need a trophy to, to, to justify that um, kind of statement. Um, and I'm aware of that. Steve, you ended your bar years winning a cup final. How much would it mean to you now to end the Saracens years before you head off to become a World Cup coach? Um, I think that we, we as Mark says, we do love to win the game on Saturday, uh, as we would have loved to win the game won the game on last Saturday. Um, it's been a tremendous amount of hard work for lots of people in this organisation. Um, throughout this season and the years before that to, to get to this point in time and to get to get to this final. Um, I think that you know, essentially we're gonna we're gonna go out Saturday and give it play as hard as we possibly can. Um, one thing I'm sure of this group is that um, it won't be for want of trying. Um, we're playing against a very good team in Northampton as we did in Toulon last last Saturday. Um, so I can't tell you what, what the result's gonna be, but we're gonna give it our very, very best shot. What did you say to the players after the Inners of Changing Masters? What were your kind of messages to the, to the players? And to um, I, I, Mark's actually already talked to them. Firstly, um, I said thank you for a huge effort. I was really proud of the way the guys played. Um, I was really proud of the effort, the physicality, the intensity with which the guys played at. Um, so it was, a, it, was, it was a huge thank you to everybody, and not just the guys playing, but we had everybody in the change room, so I thanked everybody who was present for all their work to help get the team out. Um, and then after that, I said, what Mark's already touched upon is that this group over the last few years has always responded really well to anything that's been thrown at us, good or bad. We always then learn and, and get stronger from it. And um, I, you know, I expected that um, the same thing will happen. The group will, will get stronger from last week and then whatever this week and next season will be better and the season after that will be better again. That's the way this, this organisation goes. Steve, Eddie Jones has been saying some very complimentary things about you today. Can I just ask, what is it about the Japan job that sort of, that's what you've decided to do after you finish play? What was the attraction there? Oh, um, uh, I think, uh, firstly, it's something I've been involved in for a, um, the last period of time. I think that 
Um, I don't know how much you guys are aware of what happened here at Saracens, but the club is incredibly supportive of giving players opportunities um, to develop their interests, be it, be it their interests at the current time or interests for jobs after rugby or um, other aspects. So, so lots of the players here are involved with things outside and for the last couple of years Eddie gave me an opportunity to be involved with the Japan rugby team and that relationship has grown and Eddie asked me to, to join the team on a, a full-time basis once I retired from, from playing and it's an opportunity um, to go and work under a fantastic coach like Eddie Jones and, and learn um, I think, which I think has already been great for my development and, and will continue to be great for my development. What's it about coaching that appeals? Um, I think um, that being involved in, in professional sport is, is a privilege and I think it also has all kinds of pressures attached to it, um, but it's, it's fantastic. I've spent 16 years as a player, so to have the opportunity to stay in rugby um, to work with assisting players and helping them, whilst I can no, I'll no longer be on the field myself, but to hopefully assist players in their own development, that appeals to me. And what in particular about working with the Japanese that, that sort of, you, know, you found interesting or different or challenging? Um, I think that the group is uh, an exceptionally ambitious, hard-working group that's eager to learn. And I think with Eddie Jones as head coach, he's got a superb head coach. Um, and to be involved in that kind of, uh, of team, that kind of organisation, I think will be um, fantastic for my uh, development as a coach moving forward. Can you tell us how long, Steve, your plan has been out there? Because with the next World Cup, 2019 World Cup in Japan, and that's a pretty exciting prospect for their rugby. Is it, is it out of the question that you will be involved with that long, or is it a much shorter term? No, okay. it is, no. At, at this point, at this point in time, I'm contracted to coach them um, through the next World Cup and a period of time after. So, so we're looking in the next, the next couple of years. Um, then, yeah. So not not thinking beyond that. Mark, just, just the, the, um, the advice you give to Steve about making the transition from playing into coaching, the quality that you think. That he has to make a good coach. I'll talk, I'm not sure about advice, but I'll, I'll talk more about the qualities that he has. Um, he's clearly got unbelievable knowledge. Everybody knows that. He's very analytical, um, which is critical. But Steve manages people well. That's the most important thing. Um, he he understands different personality types. He understands um, how to engage and interact with with people. And, uh, Steve will be a successful coach because of all of those reasons. He's got a superb rugby brain, um, but he's got a way of, of getting the best out of people, and I think um, that's going to be the critical factor. How long did it take you, Mark, would you say, to make the kind of transition from player to coach? Is there a kind of, some people take longer, some people take to quicker? It's funny, I, I, I was just an assistant coach at, at, at Ulster and got the opportunity to do that. Um, having been a player, I suppose the difference for me was there's a lot of the players that I had been playing with, I was coaching straight away, and that made the transition, I, I suppose, a little bit more difficult for me. Steve's not going to have to do that. The Japanese players see Steve as a coach rather than um, as somebody they've they've played with. So I think for Steve, it, it'll be uh, a lot easier. Mark, can you just give us a word on Northampton and the threat that they pose? Obviously, there's a lot of big ball carriers such as yourselves, big centre, big backs. How do you view the battle? Yeah, you wouldn't want to pigeonhole Northampton anymore. I think in the past you could have done that, but they're a much more rounded team than they've been um, in the past. Their set piece remains very strong. It always has been. Everybody knows that Alex King has added to their attacking game, and they've got some pretty good athletes uh, in their back line. Now they signed really well last summer, played some good rugby um, throughout this year. And you saw uh, in that second half against Bath on the weekend, on, on Friday night, just how good their defence can be. They had um, a real appetite to get off the line. Um, uh, made life very difficult for, for Bath. So their all-round game is very strong, and we know that. In knockout rugby, where winning can become a habit and keeps the confidence going, what sort of chink in the arm will the result for you guys on Saturday be, perhaps, compared to, compared to them? Well, I don't know, because you know, before Saturday, we were... Um, we had huge momentum, absolutely huge momentum, and uh, we were playing really well. We don't think we played too badly on Saturday. The last 20 minutes were, um, were the last 20 minutes were 17 points down to a very good side, and um, it was pretty tough to play against them. But the first hour of the match, 
there maybe wasn't as much in it as as a lot of people think that think that there was. Um, we could have couple of done some things better, of course. Um, there's a couple of things didn't go our way, um, but we're not too damaged by what happened on the weekend. Um, we know that we played um, for the most part okay. No, but there's there's he's not the only one. There's been it's a pretty tough game on the weekend, and you get to the stage in the season and you manage people um, in any event. For example, for the for the whole squad yesterday, it was a, a walk through rather than a, a proper training session. So he hasn't missed too much. No, he, he's got he, he, he clearly got a a, a, a small sprained ankle with him, but one's one's fine. You mustn't worry. He's he'll be yeah. fine. He'll be training. Can you, can you go? Yeah. Of course, of course, he, he's, 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 he's playing well. He, you know, it was the worst possible thing that could happen ten minutes before the start of the Hannon Cup final. Um, what happened? And he comes into the change room and his his ankles swollen quickly and it's big and it's not ideal, is it? But uh, it kind of shows you his strength of character that he gets on and he plays okay. Did it affect his performance? I don't think so. And on the, I thought he played played well in the game. Um, so no, it didn't. The training um, and coaching today accelerate your decision about moving into the tracksuit, or would you have got to the end of the season and said, "Now I want to end my playing career and move on to coaching"? Um, no, I think that um, Saracens have been fantastic in that there's the opportunity to continue playing, and Saracens gave me lots of time to consider that. And I wanted to do right by Saracens. I wanted to make the, the right decision for myself, but I wanted to do the right thing by Saracens and give Saracens lots of time to plan ahead. I think it would have been um, pretty um, pretty poor of me if I'd waited till the end of the season and said to Mark, thanks, I don't want to play anymore, um, and leave them in a poor situation for next year. So, um, so no, I, I, I was very conscious. I wanted to tell Mark very early on that... Um, whether, whether I was going to carry on playing or not, and but I need to make that decision regardless of coaching opportunities. I need to know um, once you retire, very few people come back, so I need to make sure that that it was the um, it was going to be the right decision, and I believe it is. I was able to make that decision um, eight or nine months ago uh, with my family, and and able to to then inform Mark so they can plan ahead. Was there a chance of working either? Here or elsewhere in England, or was it important to have that clean break of going somewhere completely different? Um, I, I think that um, the clean break is a, is an advantage for me to, to go to somewhere different. But I think the, the big opportunities for me to to work with a great group or a group under, working underneath the coach of the experience of Eddie Jones. I think that's particularly important for me in my development to to work under such an experienced coach. That's a, a huge attraction. Steve, where, where, where are we getting this Saracens team? Um, where would it rank? It, it, it's really, really difficult to make those comparisons, you know, because um, you know I can talk about all kinds of things. I was actually asked a question earlier on. I can talk about um, you know a final game for Bath. I can talk about um, captain in England. I can talk about the Premiership we won in two thousand eleven. Um, but I think there's all kinds of fantastic memories I've got working and um, with this group, and I think that um, I want the team to enjoy the success of lifting silverware. But this is a group that I've been privileged to be part of for a long time, and and I have lots of fantastic memories, and many of them are on the rugby field, but lots of them are off the rugby field, and lots of them are um, other things that be inconsequential to other people, but. Um, but moments with friends um, and teammates; those are, are pretty awesome memories. So, yep, yeah, this would be this would be absolutely special to, to win this weekend, as it as it always would be. Um, but to be part of this group is a privilege. Jimmy, with what happened, Steve, will you end your playing career with a sense of fulfilment? Um, I, I think so. I think so. I feel I feel content with where I'm at. I've been a professional for um, 16 years. I played for two. Great clubs in Bath and Saracens. Um, I think I've earned the respect of my teammates. I made lots of great friends along the way, and so I, I, I look back, and perhaps in years to come, I will look back even more. And um, but 
content with it. I've, it's been a fantastic journey as a player, and hopefully there's there's plenty more steps to go. We're still involved with this brilliant sport that we're all um, involved in. See, what will you miss most about playing? Um, what will I miss most about playing? Um, I'm tempted to to take the opportunity to take the mick out of Skulk Brits. Um, for <laughs> 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 but I'll, um, I'll try and resist that. Um, <laughs> nah, um, um, I'll, I get I get changed in the, in the change room next to Moritz Botha, and every morning he has some new ridiculous idea for me uh, for us to enact. <laughs> and I send him off to see the coaches to see if he can get it through. I said, I agree, Mo. It's a great idea. <laughs> Go and speak to Mark. Um, nah, the. the what, what will I what will I miss most? Um, clearly, I, I think I'll only realise that once I'm no longer playing. Once probably September comes and I see Saracens playing again, um, I think I'll probably only realise that then. Um, but the, as far as I'm concerned, the friendships I've, I've created that's going to continue. That's going to um, come with me. And, and even a, a few weeks ago, I met a load of friends, a load of teammates that some I hadn't seen in quite a long period of time beforehand and um, he walks through the door and it's like it's only yesterday we were playing with each, you know playing alongside each other for, for Bath or whoever it was and um, I think that's a, it's a real measure of this sport I think the um, and, and I can't compare it with other sports but I do think we're special in that the, those friendships those bonds are created um, it's a tough sport and within that tough sport you find a lot about a lot about each other and one if you earn respect and you earn your friendship from people, and these are tough men. Um, I think those those bonds are very, very strong. Steve, can you give an indication of how close you came to not being able to finish off your career with two finals? What is the situation with your um, I'm, I'm I'm good. I'm ready to go this weekend. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a great situation, um, but I'm, I was fortunate to, that that here we've got an excellent medical team and and strength and conditioning team and. I have thanked them personally. I'll thank them publicly. They've helped me not just these last this last fortnight, but um, throughout my time here. Um, obviously, when you play as many games as I have, the, there's a little bit of wear and tear. And there's a, um, a, 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 a little a little bit of looking after. Um, but um, you know, the, the the 7 a.m. physio appointment I have downstairs. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which every morning. I'm not sure which player's putting his hand up to take that slot once I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what, what toll has 16 years of playing at the top of the game? I mean, what, what bits of you haven't you had surgery? Oh. Um, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question because I, I did answer it once a couple of years ago, and the next weekend I got injured on that bit of my body. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm not going to answer the question. You know. Yes, it, it takes a toll, and but one thing is, you know, being involved in sport, making you know, living, playing, playing this amazing sport, whether you earn money for it or not, it's a privilege. Um, to be involved with this great club that I am, and to have played previously for ten seasons at Bath, and to have represented England, um, that's, I mean, you know, who wouldn't bite your hand off to take that? What I've been able to to do, and. You know, there are costs along the way. There are things, um, there are things that you know it, it, it takes its toll. But I don't. I honestly don't bat an eyelid at those now. You know, you'd, I'd go back and do it all again to have all those experiences again. I'm no, you know, I'm content with it. It's been an amazing, amazing journey. Um, and to think, you know, when I was back when I was a kid, and 14 years old, saying I want to play for England, and um, and then, you know, 95, 96 would be turned professional. And, you know, I was asked, you know, you're at school and you, you fill your careers forms in, you know, what, what do you want to do? And I said, I wrote down, I want to be a professional rugby player. And to have been able to do that for 16 seasons and have those experiences and see the parts of the world and play the international, play the stadium I played in. And, um, but as I say, the, the, the biggest thing it keeps coming back to is the respect for my teammates and the friendships I've made. Those are the those are things that I'll take with me forever. Steve, Steve, you were a bloody proud captain of England. What's your gut instinct now about this current England side? Where do you think it can go? Because a lot of people would think that the values of this, this England side are finally 
pretty much in your image. Where, where, do, you, where do you think this England side can go? Um, I think that the the future is um, this is completely looking from the outside. I think I think the future looks um, incredibly positive, and I think it's an exci- it's such an exciting time for this sport. When you think you know we've got an England team that's competing with the best teams in the world, um, and it's an England team that's young, an England team that's got you know seem a great amount of potential, and we've got a World Cup in this country next year. You saw the effect that the world, winning the World Cup in 2003 had. We won it down in Australia. Imagine a successful England campaign in a World Cup in this country. The effect that that could have on rugby in this country for the next generation would be just absolutely terrific. Um, so I think that that's um, it's, an, it's a really, and I said this a few times already, the sport we're involved in, the sport we're all fortunate to be involved in, We've got a World Cup in this country. We've got an England team that will hopefully do tremendously well. It's a sport that's now in the Olympics. It's a, you know it's a sport that's spreading, it's growing. Um, I, I see, you know, it's, you know the future for the, for what we do is, is you know it's it's massive, it's huge. So and hopefully England will be at the forefront of of all aspects of the game moving forward, and, and hopefully Saracens will be a a big part of that as well. Steve, have you got your head around coaching for Japan in the World Cup? Year next year, as rivals against them. Um, the honest, the honest answer is is no, um, because I'm, whilst I know what I'm doing after this point in time until Saturday, until Saturday and night, I'm a I'm a rugby player with Saracens, and and I owe it to my teammates and and friends to ensure that they have my full attention, my full focus, and I said it to them many many times. They will have everything of me. I'll give absolutely everything to my teammates until um, until I finish. Uh, I promise them that, and I'll, I'll continue to do that. I don't say it's going to be perfect. I don't say I've never said that, but I will always, always try my very best for my teammates. Steve, is there any part of you that's just a, a little bit envious of this current group of England players who have an organisation above them that's clearly a lot more structured and a lot better run than it was when, mm-hmm. when you were in charge? Is that any um, sort of... No, I. I, I I don't think so, and I, and I don't. I don't want to. I, I see. I don't see. I see this as, and I've got lots of friends, lots of teammates here that are involved in this current England team. I want them to do well. I want them to be tremendously successful. I've come across lots of people um, that post playing for England or post playing for their teams have then talked a lot from the outside, and and I, I've really not done that. I've not talked much about my time when I was involved in the England team because. Um, you know, I, I got to play for England. I got to captain England. Um, why, why would you ever possibly want to talk in any kind of derogatory way about it? You know, it's um, for a, for a period of time I was able to wear the England shirt before it then got passed on to somebody else, and then it get passed on to somebody else. And um, that I see myself as being incredibly privileged to have been able to do. Um, you know, will be that England shirt will still be being worn. For many years, long long after I've gone, you know, it's long after the, the current players have gone. So, all you can do is do your very, very best to be put in a performance that's worthy of being in that England team, and that's what all, all I ever try, try to achieve. And I'm sure that's what the England players are doing right now: is trying to be the best they possibly can be. Mark, you said uh, last week that it would just prove that life's unfair. I think what makes playing these two games now the is that he has been able to. Progress that we've made, but just on a on a pure playing side, he just brings um, such confidence in the rest of the group, and I think that's the the, the key the key thing. Can do again the weekend? Of course he can. Yeah. Steve, in terms of the England time, is there a moment that you really cherish? It's a special moment that you look back that will stay with you. Um, I'm trying to think. There are, there are many. Many of them. Um, you can't honestly. Um, you can't describe. I mean, people, lots of people ask me, what does it mean, or what does it feel like to play for England? You know, walking out Twickenham, you know, in the England shirt, leading the side out, or, or not, or, or walking out with this great group of people. It's it's an incredible feeling. Um, incredible feeling to be to be part of that and to have the nation willing you to do well. It's it's an it's an unreal feeling and one I've been. Very fortunate to have experienced quite a few times. Um, 
So, yeah, I can't pick up one moment. I'm sorry. Steve, how do you think you will be remembered as a player? How would you want to be remembered? Um, that's that's up to the people to decide. I, you know, uh, I, from my teammates, friends, and teammates. How ready are you to just go head to head with the young guy? Um, I, I think he's an outstanding player. I think he's he's a he's a very good player in a very good Northampton pack, and I think that. Um, we need to be at our very best this weekend. We know Mark's touched on it already. We know there's a big challenge. It's one of the major strengths of their game, and there are lots of strengths of their game. So uh, we need to prepare very well, and we have been preparing very well um, to make sure we we um, bring out uh, you know, the best performance we possibly can. Steve, do you expect to be emotional at the end of it all? Um, I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I, 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 as long as, as long as we put in a performance that we, we're proud of, that um, you know, hope, hopefully the result goes our way. We want to, you know, hopefully, hopefully we win. We, we desperately want to win. We go into every game wanting to win. Um, but um, you know, we need to make sure we, we, we work our work right and our, our effort and our um, intensity is at the standard that, that is acceptable for us. And we put in a performance that we're proud of. Thanks. Thanks.